Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue in section 3.2, the purpose of this next video is to help you understand the difference between how to write x intercepts and how to write, oops, how to write what a zero of a function is. Okay? And the way I'm going to help you understand that is the first thing I'm asking you to do is to sketch a graph of the function y equals x squared minus 4. Now, I hope you really don't even need a calculator to do that. You know that x squared is a basic parabola, and minus 4 tells me to drop it down 4 units. So, my y-intercept and, coincidentally, the vertex would be down here at 0, negative 4. Something else I want you to notice here is that if you factor this function as x plus 2 times x minus 2, it's very easy to see that this function becomes 0 when I plug in a negative 2 or a positive 2. So that means the graph crosses the x-axis at 2, and it also crosses the x-axis at negative 2. And here's the reason behind that. If I put in a negative 2 for x, that means y becomes 0. Well, that would be the ordered pair negative 2, 0. If I put in a 2 for x, this would become 0, which means y would become 0. So the ordered pair 2, 0 is on my graph. And of course, I know this is a parabola. So that's my picture. Now, when I ask you to write the x-intercepts of a graph, I want to know the ordered pairs, and it's very important that you understand x-intercepts are always to be written as ordered pairs, okay? So, I want to know the ordered pairs where the graph crosses the x-axis. Well, you automatically know if I'm on the x-axis, y is 0, so I know that the back number in each of those ordered pairs is 0, and I can tell that the front numbers, pretty much by factoring and by looking at my graph, the front two numbers are 2 as well as negative 2. So I have two x-intercepts here, namely the ordered pair negative 2, 0, and the ordered pair positive 2, 0. Anytime somebody asks you for x-intercepts, look at the graph. Where does it cross the x-axis? It may not always have them, but in this case it has 2 and they are to be written as ordered pairs. The second question here says find the zeros of this function. Okay, a mathematical definition of a zero. A zero is an x value that causes the y value to become zero. Well, negative two was an x value that caused y to become zero. 2 was also an x value that caused y to become 0. So the zeros of this function would be x equals negative 2 as well as x equals positive 2. So what you need to understand, the concept of x-intercept and zeros are very, very intimately tied. All right? When I look at the when I look at where the graph crosses the x-axis, those two ordered pairs are the x-intercepts. The x-value alone where it touches is called the zero of the function. Okay? So, x-intercepts are ordered pairs. Zeros of a function are the x-values that we've taken out of the x-intercept. And also, if I plugged these x values directly into the function, I would get 0. And watch that. What if I plugged in a negative 2? Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Got it? And if I plugged in a 2? 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So a 0 of a function is an x value so that when you plug it into the function, it becomes 0. Another way to say it, it is the front number in each of the x-intercepts. All right, so anytime you're looking for the zeros of a function on a graph, 
you're looking at the place where the graph crosses the x-axis and you're looking at the x values only. Those are called the zeros. If a graph does not cross the x-axis, then it has no real zeros. And we're done.